Okay, let's do this. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. We've all heard this said by kids trying to fend off a bully or maybe a sibling that's picking on them, but let's be honest with ourselves. Words can absolutely hurt you. I believe we have the power to change that. Now, I remember in the first grade, my teacher, Mrs. Smith, she told me to tell my mom to pack more carrots and less cookies in my lunchbox because I was fat and I didn't want to be a fat little girl, right? I was six years old, and this is the first time that I remember feeling bad about myself. You know, it's been a few years, not that many, but I still remember that experience. I can't even remember why I went in the kitchen or where I put my keys, but I remember that like it was yesterday. The brain is such an interesting organ, so I'd like to explore that with you today. The part of the brain that oversees things like learning, memories and emotions is called the limbic system. It regulates our responses to emotional stimulus and reinforces behavior. This certainly isn't the only part of the brain that is connected with memory, but it's most commonly referred to as the emotional center of the brain. Now, the limbic system includes the hypothalamus, which controls our emotional responses, regulates hormone and body temperature. The hippocampus, which regulates learning, memory encoding, and memory consolidation, and the amygdala, which perceives stress and danger. So here I am, six years old. My teacher calls me fat in front of my entire class. I'm embarrassed, my temperature changes, my hormones are released, and I'm experiencing anxious emotions. This is the limbic system at work, helping me store this memory. Now still I remember, when I was 12 and Jason Santiago told me no boy would ever kiss me because I had nappy hair. And a year later, when a girl threw rocks at me and called me a whore because the boy that she liked, liked me. Or when I was 16 and someone important to me said that Spanish girls were just for messing around with, not for taking seriously. Negative words like these heard over and over in adolescence cause emotional damage that can continue into your adulthood. Even beyond the emotional connections between words and the brain, there are actual physiological brain changes that can occur with prolonged exposure to verbal abuse. These MRI scans show brain development issues in people who have had emotional abuse. Emotional abuse includes things like witnessing violence or experiencing bullying or verbal abuse. As you can see here, the negative impacts to the brain development are linked to things like anxiety and depression disorder. According to a Harvard Medical School study, even MRI scans on subjects who said they had experienced no physical interaction, just verbal bullying, showed a lack of connection between the left and the right brain. This shows words are powerful. Now, I do have some good news. Many of those same studies show that brains are neuroplastic. This means that we have the ability, with consistent effort, to form and reorganize the neural pathways within our brains. We can create new emotional connections, heal our disconnected brains, and maybe even be a blessing to someone in the process. One way to initiate this change is to focus on mindset. Carol Dweck, a professor from Stanford, suggests that we have two mindsets, a fixed mindset, which is not open to change and sees no room for improvement. This is probably something you might say, I can't, it's a waste of time, or I'm just wired that way. Or you can have a growth mindset. And a person with a growth mindset is persistent in the face of challenges. They look for opportunities to grow and they believe in free will. They find inspiration in their setbacks and they encourage others with positive affirmations. Remember, I think, therefore I am. By opening up the door to curiosity and change and becoming more structured in the way that we plan on how to deal with difficult situations, we can create new habits that eventually become new neural pathways to healing. Think about what it is you're thinking about. Are you putting yourself down in your mind or even worse, are you putting yourself down out loud in front of other people? Our words are so important. The words we say to ourselves might even be more important than the words that other people say to us. We have to act 
consistently to quiet the old voices of the past and replace them with our newfound power. We have to take action. One of the best things about growing up is learning that you don't have to listen to hateful crap from ignorant people. Whether it's a friend, a family member, or the leader of the free world, we have the ability to silence words by taking consistent action. If watching the news is giving you a panic attack, turn it off. Like Sean mentioned earlier, if your friends are making ignorant comments on Facebook, educate them and then turn them off too. We have to put our phones down. We have to stop the spiraling of concerns about things that we did yesterday. I'm giving you scientific permission to let it go. We have to build our brains just like we build our bodies. We work out to get rid of all those cookies from the past and we have to work our brains the same way. Our mental health has to be worked so that we can get rid of those attachments. No permanent change comes without consistency. I recommend surrounding yourself with people who are growth minded, people that bring you joy, people that inspire you to try new things, to move towards positivity and encourage you to continue to improve. You can use techniques like visualization, meditation or journaling to help support this mental growth and these new neural pathways. But most of all, be patient. It took years of words to damage us and it's gonna take some more time to remap all these things. But remember, you have a powerful mind and powerful words because you are powerful. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome, Donna. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. So much there. I hope people were taking notes. Um, <laughs> Cause you know, I think we're all dealing